Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're doing our Necro Dracon guide. And in this one, we're going to once again look at towards some end game stuff where you have mythic plus characters if you have them but then what i really want to focus on is the progression side of things which most people are in when you don't have a bunch of mythic plus characters because i feel like those are the hurdles people are trying to get through and with this one you kind of just ignore one of the core mechanics of the boss and work on the rest of the stuff but there are some very important things you need to manage with this boss to try and maximize your damage so first of all for those people with uh, you know maybe spenders uh you know got decent luck and they have some mythic plus characters we can look at this so what we have is we have Vatra and Analytica working together on this guide. Um, we have Vatra's website here, which you can go to and check out. And I'll have links to these all in the description. Uh, we got Analytica over here. And then for people who are a bit more lost and want some more basics, fundamentals, understanding, we have Pridewin who always have great write-ups going through a bunch of different characters and options and stuff like that. But let's go back to this one and just take a look at some quick formations. Once again, this is not for most people in the early game. I just want to cover this quickly. When we look at things like Rainier, uh, Merrily, and Corrin, these guys need dupes to work. They need to be at least Mythic Plus to get their core functionality. The reason these are uh, that we have Corrin, we have Merrily, and we even have Tamesia in this one is because they have movement effects. And we'll get into his skill set, why you want movement effects in a minute. But they are definitely great options. Once you get to Mythic Plus, if they're not Tamesia, you can actually use not at mythic plus and maybe get some value out of her but corin and merrily i've tested them thoroughly their damage just sucks until they get to mythic plus at least on my account i just cannot make them work over something like an Odie and cecia who people will have invested at this stage most probably now the other one that we do have is Vala. If you've pulled Vala copies, definitely test her out in this one uh, because she does have movement mechanics tied into her ultimate uh, and she does have pretty decent damage as well. Uh, physical damage, making use of the Kruger in this one. Uh, Seth, I don't think many people have Seth built and stuff like that, so I wouldn't go too stressed on that. And those are the basic units that we are looking at. So if you want more in-depth stuff into the end game, definitely go check out these two resources, uh, these resources up here uh, and get yourself some more info there. But once again, I like to focus in on the progression the more free to play low spender side of things because in these early stages we are trying to progress through now i've done a bunch of testing already today to try and you know get 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 my uh, information as solid as i can uh to give you guys the best info now when we look at this dragon we have a few effects. Basically, his ultimate, he's going to do it three times throughout the battle, 15 seconds, 40 seconds, 65 seconds, and he's just going to deal big AoE damage. You do gain attack speed from it, but the catch is you receive extra damage. So the, the damage really snowballs in this fight. So killing him quickly is going to be super handy, but in the early game, you kind of also just got to live through it as well. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a trade-off, and we'll go through that in a minute. Uh, the next one is this one, Unleashes a Powerful Dragon's Breath at the area. This is very similar to King Croker's uh, little bomb that he shoots out at allies. Your positioning is really going to matter to get him to target this at the at the units you want him to hit and not the ones that you don't want him to hit. So we'll talk a bit about positioning in this in a minute. Uh, this one, basically, he does, does damage and stuns uh, two healthiest allies uh, and they lose energy. So that's that one. And then finally, we have this one. So it happens at five seconds after the start of the battle, and they cast again every 20 seconds, um, where he puts this ring around the feet of each each enemy or each of your characters, and you basically need movement effects to get out of it. And that's why things like Corrin, Merrily, Tamesia are so good, because they're always moving, so they can get out of it, and they don't get the debuff that is applied, which is a reducing attack um, and your energy, regain, energy efficiency. So... It, ideally in the end game you want to be getting out of this thing with movement effects but at this stage where most people are kind of like in my situation with characters built and you don't have the mythic plus so you don't have the big damage coming out of merrily and corin you kind of just ignore that so when we take a look there are many different options you can go with now i've been experimenting here like i said i've done a bunch of attacks merrily and corin just don't work for me Basically, I, they need that Mythic Plus. So what are the key things that we are looking to do? Now, what I'll do is I'll show you my best team. My best team currently is this formation here. Now, yes, I could work on this and maybe get a better team going. But at the moment, this is my best formation. Now, the reason being, sorry, it actually looks like this because uh, otherwise Smokey gets into a bit of trouble. The reason for this being my best team currently uh, is that 
yes, uh, you can do stuff with Odie to get massive damage, but then I have to sacrifice one of my sustain units or my Kruger. And the thing about Kruger is he allows me to target the dragon's AOE bomb into melee range and save my healers from getting killed. So it's a bit of a finicky one. You can definitely try different formations. I will show you guys this one. I will show you one with Odie in it. And I will also show you one where if we if you don't have Smokey, because often an issue is not having Smokey, you can actually just run... Um, uh, Coco and for me I get I got my best is 90% with this team and I can get 80% with just Coco and no Smokey and just basically throwing in an Odie so you can still get decent damage without Smokey now Thorin is here for his damage amplification and to tank if you don't have a Thorin you can use another tank now Tamesia would be a great option in this as well because she would stay in that melee range and actually have a decent effect on her where she keeps avoiding it I don't know if she would be better because I couldn't test it on this account but on my previous account I did use Tamesia in this fight and she was pretty good although that one was at i think legendary plus on that account so keep that in mind ascension will matter and that's that's another thing i also tested uh shakir in this one because i have a decently you know i, I he got a couple dupes uh, shakir like my shakir's okay he's got one dupe into him i use some acorns uh, and he actually performed decently well at around like a 78 percent uh the health boss's health so you know it depending on dupes is going to change what you're going to use but this is my best team so i want to show you this one and then i want to show you some very Variations. Now, the key thing that I want you to note here is that the Kruger is going to run up to about here. The Thorin is going to run up to here. And when my Cecilia summons her uh, Mr. Kyle Isle, he's going to go here. That's going to put three units around the boss. And that is going to make the boss's AoE attack them every time. Now, we also, you, you could sub out. Um, and I have tried this. I have tried subbing out Coco from this team and running Odie for more damage. Except it just doesn't, I, I don't get across the line. I die too quick. But depending on what stage of the game you're at, something like that could definitely work. So you do have to mix this around. So D units along with testing things like uh, Odie as well to Messia if you have her those are the main formation changes that I would experiment with to see if you can get more damage because what you'll see from this this formation is typically I'm dying I'm actually getting wiped at about zero seconds at about 90% damage so I'm missing damage but I also can't survive through everything so I'm at like the peak survival range I need to be at my damage is just a little bit low so also I am using the uh, the haste one here um, for this one so it's just got that the, the raw haste and it, we reduce their attack speed and stuff like that. But this one is just basically amazing for bosses. So that's the one I'm always using for bosses unless there's niche situations where I'm not. Um, so let's go in and I'm going to show you guys this one and the way it works. And then we'll once again show you guys some other options. So here you can see Kruger and Thorin going up there. Now they are both in range of Smokey after he uses an ultimate. And you can see here Smokey got stunned. That's cool. That's just his effect that happens. And he's already putting his little AoE bomb in melee range, um, which sometimes he won't do it in that range. It's it's just, it's just really weird. You got to play around with it. It's super finicky on where he targets his bomb. But now that I got three units in that melee range, he is guaranteed to pop them there every time. And we should be pretty safe that that is where the bomb is always going. Now, as you can see, we're doing, we're up to 50% already, which seems good. And now we're about to get hit. You can see we just clutched that last tick of damage. We get the ult off on our um, Coco, which is fantastic. So Coco's pretty clutch for survival in this one. Uh, my, my Kruger's about to die here. There you go. He gets dropped. And as you can see we're taking some big damage now i need coco to get her ultimate off before the boss's ult right there perfect timing and there we go there now the boss may do his bomb into my range here because i've lost the kruger and now my positioning is off and that's where i start taking damage and his next bomb is actually going to kill my um my two dps and you can see we're at 94 percent but we are at zero seconds as well so this is one of those situations where this is my current best composition and by the end of today i will have my full roster up to level 110 and then I will be able to equip a better gear and that's what I'm going to wait for to get my max damage and that's sort of the formation I have found to be optimal for me in this situation now like I said there are other things you can do to get more optimal damage um, but it just depends on whether you have the survival to do so and stuff like that for instance I also experimented with running Kruger tank but my Kruger is too low ascension but this is definitely something you could experiment with running something like this to try and get that extra damage out of your team comp. My problem is I just die way too quick and this doesn't work for me. But this is definitely an option if you can make it work. The other problem with this is it's really hard with this composition to get the boss to use his AoE um, in, in melee range because 
we're, like we've got so many ranged units and we only got the one melee and even with my uh mr carlisle i couldn't get it to work so your ranged units are taking the brunt of it when you've got this type of formation so even though this could net me more damage in a dps race it's not because I die too quick, essentially is the problem with this one. Um, but like I said, I, I wanted to mention this. So like I said, we had the other idea. And once again, Thorin, if you don't have Thorin, uh, you can run You can run without Thorin. It's just he's got the damage amplification, which is really nice. So he does add that bit of damage, but he's not as necessary in this one. Uh, he's definitely not necessary in this one compared to like something like King Croker. So let's go through this formation here uh, and look at what we can do with this type of formation. So with this one, I'm actually going to move Cecilia there. I'm going to move Odie there. I think he should definitely still be uh, using his bomb in melee range. Also, just in editing, make sure as you're going through this stuff, if you have split levels, like I've got four level 110s and one level 100, make sure you're adjusting those as you go. I just realized I recorded this whole video showing you guys teams, and I never adjusted that along the way. So that is completely my bad. But just so you do, when you guys are testing things, make sure you're adjusting those levels. But I just want to show you what we can do if we we don't have the Odie because I know, I mean, sorry, if we don't have the Smokey because Smokey is such a clutch unit, but I want to show you the kind of damage I can get. Hopefully this gets me a decent one. I, I did get around 80% with the formation without Smokey, but I don't know. Okay. We are getting the bomb into melee range, which is good. That's what we are aiming for. So we are getting the defense reds on, but the problem is uh, pretty soon after this, we are going to lose Kruger because we don't have enough mitigation. And that's where we are going to start to struggle because we can't keep ourselves topped off. And then we will got, start getting those AOE bombs into our back row. But as you can see this way here without Smokey we are getting some decent damage we ramp him up to 50% super super quick and it looks like we're going to be killing it uh, with this one unfortunately my Coco is just going to be a little bit late on her ult so th th that's so this is one of those ones with a little bit of RNG I don't know if I can get Coco to get that ultimate off a little bit faster that would have kept my whole team alive for another whole phase of the fight uh, and would have got me a lot more damage but I still think I would have got wiped before we get above my current record but as you can see there that was Coco just being a little bit short on energy and sometimes some small positioning adjustments can affect that um but that's like the kind of thing you're looking at so if you don't have smoky you just got to go the yolo approach and just try and punch out as much damage as you can relying on that coco once again there are different rng effects maybe you try and make it so that the, the boss's first bomb goes on coco maybe get some energy but it does sap energy there's a lot of different little bits of rng as you go through these fights that can definitely change the the, the way it works but i I think for those without Smokey, this is going to be a formation I would recommend. And if you don't have Thorin, then just run basically anything else you have as like a tanking option. You know what? I'm going to sacrifice one more run, but I really want to save the rest for the uh, later in the day to try and actually clear this one. Um, so let's just go ahead and run an Antandra and see how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start him back. So Antandra, uh, I don't know if, if he's going to, if Kruger's going to take the aggro on this one. You know, let's try and think of something else here. I, I, I honestly want to try this with uh, Shakir and see if this works. All right, so I, I, I'm going to do that again. I, I realized this whole video, I've been messing up the levels of my units and I haven't been adjusting levels every time I test something new. So I do apologize for that. Make sure you are doing that. I'll put a disclaimer at the start of the video. I just, I'm just going to eat one more attack. Then I've got to save the rest for the end of the day. But I just want to run through this one once more. Scrap that other one because we were low levels and just see how this can perform like this one. Just to give you guys an idea of the damage of a smoky list team once again you could use brutus you could use uh thorin you could use anything else in this uh spot of shakir but i just want to experiment with shakir because he's a cool unit so let's go ahead and do this my idea with shakir being positioned here now is from the previous run that i'm not going to include uh when he uses his ult he jumps right across so with this one he should jump across and be on top of mr carlisle so that should keep my grouping so that the boss still alt uh uses his bomb on them we'll see how it goes boom there we go all right let's go so boss bomb goes in the middle. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we're still going. And this is where Shakir has that little bit of mute movement, which isn't too bad on the ultimate. So we get the one movement. Okay. He bugs out and he doesn't actually go anywhere. So that's not ideal for me, but hopefully the bomb still goes on Kruger. Yes. Okay. So the bomb's going on Kruger and Carlisle, but unfortunately that is going to end once Kruger dies pretty soon here, uh, which is going to cost us. And we're about to get the boss's next ult, which unfortunately we're not going to have the energy on a what's her face. 
face and she is going to get dropped so once again like i said these these are not 100 percent like ideal teams or anything like that but just some options if you don't have specific units once again i am still liking the smoky this team i think works best with a thorin at the moment you get more damage amplification bit of survival stuff like that but there are options you can do but just expect not to get as high of scores but once again just repeating where we're at for me dude i need to i need to clear this in these four attacks i'm saving until the last minute but basically once again i'll show you guys my best formation so far that i've found to work for me um, and make sure you are adjusting those levels as you go but for me this has been my best formation so far and that is what is working but once again you got to adjust there's a bunch of things you can test to see if it will work around it's never completely straightforward these and sometimes rng is funny the bomb goes in the wrong spot you just got to adjust formations till you get it but this is a pretty good baseline for progressing through the game uh, on dealing damage if your Cecilia is super low dupe and your Odie is a super high dupe maybe your Odie does more damage as well but for me with them at the same dupes uh my Cecilia is actually outputting more plus her mr carlisle is that extra safety net to allow the boss to be hitting the melee range as well so that is pretty much it for this one as always guys thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers